Hi, I'm Hank. Today I'm going to be teaching various ways to create particle effects using custom NPC scripting. I'll be going over the basics of the spawn particle method, what each of the inputs mean, and why you'd want to use it over just using the dash particle command. I'm also going to go over some of the basic rotation math, which is how you can get different points in the world relative to different entities. The third topic I'm going to go over is turning your particle effects into hitboxes so they can be used as attacks. And the last thing I'm going to go over is using timers to create moving particle effects. First things first, how to actually spawn a particle. So this here is the spawn particle method from the API, and there's all these different inputs. I'm going to go over each of them right now. The first one is a string particle, which is the, just the particle name that you want to spawn. This will be things like cloud, smoke, flame, stuff like that. X, Y, and Z here, those are the coordinates that you're going to spawn the particles. Those are pretty self-explanatory. DX, DY, and DZ, it's listed here as usually used for motion. These are somewhat misleading. Rather, it's the size of the area that the particles are going to spawn within. Speed here is how, I guess, violently the particles are going to spawn when they appear, whether or not they're going to be traveling in any given direction, or if they're just going to be staying in place. And then count is how many particles you're going to spawn. OK, let's go over an example really quick. I made three variables here to store the coordinates of the NPC. Having the Y coordinate be above the NPC's head is just because this is going to look better than just typing these out completely in the spawn particle method here. So what this is going to do is it's going to spawn the flame particle at these coordinates, which is just directly above the NPC's head. The dx, dy, and dz are zero, meaning it's going to spawn it in the same spot every time. The speed is going to be zero, so it's not going to be flying anywhere. And the count is one, so there's only going to be one flame particle. If we right-click the NPC, we get a little flame particle above his head. So let's start changing these values and see how that affects it. First, let's make the count 10, and let's change our dx, our dy, and dz to one. So that means this is going to spawn 10 flame particles in a certain area around the NPC. As you can see, there we go. Flame particles are kind of out and about. Now if we ch let's change this to 30, and let's change the speed to 0 0.5. And there we go, we can see the flame particles flying around. Let's make this back to 0 so we can see the position better. OK, and then let's change the y value here to plus 10. As you can see, it's going to spawn way above his head. Now the second method you can use to spawn particles is just by using a normal command method. So let me type that out real quick. Okay, so I pasted some uh, particle commands over here because I can never remember them. So let's just go with the flame one right here. Let's comment this one out. And there we go, it's doing something quite similar. In addition to the flame one here, I have a block crack one to showcase uh, use of particles that you can't necessarily get using the spawn particle method. That's using different uh, block colored block particles. There we go, we get the dirt particles. And the third one here I have is the red dust particle effect uh, using RGB values here to get purple. There you go, you have a little purple dust above his head. I don't know if you can see it. It's there, I trust me. Now, just from these three examples that I just showed, it might seem like the execute command method has a bit more versatility to it. And it may seem like that to begin with, but there are drawbacks using the execute command method. First of all, it's a lot more annoying to insert specific coordinates in here because you'd have to do things like like this you have to add add the value every single time and if you're trying to do specific coordinates that gets really annoying another thing is that the execute command method is much slower it may not seem like that when we're just executing one command but if you have four loops where you're executing this like 200 300 times you'll really start to notice the performance slowing down okay i think that's it for the basics now let's move on to the hard part relativity Say, for example, I wanted to spawn the particle in front of the NPC here. Well, to do that, would you say I just add 3 to the x value? So, you know, spawn at 3 in front of the NPC. Oh, let's change the y back down to 1 here. And then do that. Well, if I have 3 on the x value, it's going to spawn 3 in the x direction. It's not going to spawn 3 in the direction that the NPC is looking. So how do we get that to happen? If you're familiar with the NPC's AI tab, you'll know that there's this rotation here. What this rotation is, is it's the NPC's actual rotation in the game world. So zero is going to be having him face down, I believe, pos positive Z. And then 180 is going to have him face down, uh, negative Z, and so forth. Now we can use this angle that the NPC is facing with trigonometry to get locations in front of the NPC. So how we get that angle is going to be using the get rotation method. So this is going to tell us that the, the angle that the NPC is currently facing. Let's just set this up real quick. OK, 
Okay, so now when I right-click the NPC, he's going to tell me which direction he's facing. Let's uh, count this out for now. He's facing 180. He's turning a little bit. You know, it's 160, 129, and so on. Now, because this angle is fixed relative to the game world, we can actually use trigonometry to get the locations in front of the NPC. So I'm going to make two variables here. I'm going to make a dx and a dz. What these are going to be is this is going to be the x component of the direction in front of the NPC, and this is going to be the z component of the direction in front of the NPC. So according to our trigonometry, the x component is going to be the sine of the angle, and the z component is going to be the cosine of the angle. Now, because uh, ECMAScript's sine and cosine functions use radians, we need to convert this angle into radians, because as you saw when we had the NPC say this earlier, it gave it to us in degrees. So how we convert that to radians is we use math.pi divided by 180. So we got to do this for both. So now these dx and dz here, these are going to give us the directional components of where the NPC is facing. One last thing we need to do is because Minecraft's axes aren't oriented like a normal graph's axes, we need to throw in a negative sign right here so that everything works normally. Now let's move these up here, change this to this, and then the coordinates that we're going to spawn our particles at now is going to be x plus dx and z plus dz. Now the reason we do this is x here is where the NPC is, actually we need to get rid of that first, and then dx is a component in the direction the NPC is facing, and then same for z here. So what this should do is this should spawn our flame particles one block in front of the NPC. As we can see, it does. Now if I have a turn, it's still spawning the particles one block in front of them. If we wanted this to be further, we could just multiply this out. So let's just add a scalar of three to each one, and let's make these particles move a little bit. So three blocks in front of them is where it's going to spawn the particles now. Now, say we didn't want these particles to spawn in front of him, we want them to spawn behind him. Well, we already have the angle. If we want the angle behind him, it's obviously going to be 180 behind him. So if we do angle minus 180, it should now spawn them behind him. There you see, particles are behind him now. Okay, I think that covers the basics of rotation math. Let's move on to making hitboxes. The general idea is to use the get nearby entities method whenever you spawn the particles uh, at the same place that you spawn the particles. So let's type that out real quick. So let's make a variable that stores the entities we're going to hit. Okay, now there's two ways we can use nearby entities. We can do it by using the IPOSE data type, which is just a position data type, or we can use specific coordinates. What we're going to do is we're going to use the specific coordinates. And then the next two inputs of get nearby entities are the range. Let's scan at a two block range and then the entity type to look for. Let's just look for players right now. So what this is going to do is this is going to get us all of the entities who are two blocks away from the spawn location of these flames. Now all we need to do to make this act like a hitbox is to loop through these entities and then damage them. So let's set that up real quick. So what this is going to do is after it acquires the entities near where the particles are spawned, it's going to go through each one and it's going to damage them for two hearts. So let's see, where is he spawning these? Spawning them behind him. Let's make you spawn them in front. So if I stand close to where that is, and if I'm in survival, it's going to damage you for two hearts. See if I'm far enough away, it's not going to hit me, but the radius we made is kind of big. Um, you, you usually want to make this one unless you have really big particle attacks. Something important to keep in mind is this damage method here uses generic damage, so it's not going to account for armor or anything like that. To have a more accurate damage, you'll have to grab the armor off of the entity that you're hitting, do a damage calculation to reduce the damage based on how much armor they have, and then apply that new damage number. If you're looking for an armor calculator, uh, you can find that on my Discord. Okay, the last thing I'm going to cover is making moving particle effects using timers. But before I do that, I'm going to do a quick crash course on timers. The method you're going to want to use is the timers force start method. So, what this is going to do is it's going to start the timer of ID 1. First number is the timer ID. Second number is the length of the timer in Minecraft ticks. 20 ticks is one second for Minecraft. And then the Boolean here at the end is if that timer is going to automatically repeat or not. So down here in this timer hook, we can set up our triggers. So if so what 
this is going to do is if the timer ID is one, it's going to trigger whatever code's in here. So let's just set up something simple. So whenever the timer is started, one second later, which is 20 ticks, the NPC is going to say an exclamation point. Oh, <laughs> my bad. And there we go. Now let's set this up so that it's spawning particles for us. How we're going to do that is first let's move this down to our timer function. Let's also move our these variables down to our timer function. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to make angle here a global variable. Okay, and then we're going to update angle whenever we right click the angle the NPC. And we're just going to start it at, we'll start at zero. Okay, and then let's get rid of our original angle here, and let's move our little hitbox function back down here. So when we start the timer, this is going to do pretty much the same thing. It's going to spawn the particles based on the angle here, but the angle we're setting to zero here. Don't worry, we're going to update it later. And then we have angle declared outside of any functions here, just to treat as a global variable. You know, let's put that up here just so it's clear what's a global variable. There we go. So we'll right click the NPC, but one second later we should have particles spawning at angle zero, which should be over there. There we go. Now what we want is we want this to have the particles move. How we're going to do that is we're going to set this timer up to repeat, so let's we'll set this to true. Then we're going to set up the angle variable to update on each loop of the timer, so angle is going to be itself plus 10. And now we want to make sure the timer stops because we really don't want this timer to go on forever. So it's set ending condition. If angle, so if angle equals 360, there we go. So if the angle reaches 360, stop the timer. Actually, just to make sure, let's do a, uh, it's greater than 360. Okay, so what's going to happen is the NPC is going to start the timer. Angle is going to start at zero. It's going to spawn the, the particles at the appropriate coordinates. Then it's going to update the angle each time the timer loops. And then that angle is then again going to be used in the calculation of the new particles. Now let's make these not move as much just so we can see it better. Okay, let's give it a go. Actually, let's, and then let's make this way faster. There we go. And there we go. Particles are moving around. And then as you can see, if we get hit by this little string here, it does damage to us. So I think that's everything I wanted to go over. If you have any more questions, you can either comment or you can join my Discord. I'll try and answer as much as I can. If there's any more topics you want me to go over, let me know that as well. Um, I think that's it. Bye.